Let me just start out with the proposition. Uh, it has seemed to me with everything I have learned, uh, and we didn't focus this inquiry on the Sandusky matter, but it, it keeps unfolding uh, in the news. Um, I firmly believe if there had been a multidisciplinary investigative team in Center County in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, that you would have heard about Jerry Sandusky then and not 10 years later, that all of the intervening victims would have been spared and that there, that particularly if there had also been a CAC, which is the out, logical outgrowth of a multidisciplinary investigative team, there would have been a conviction uh, of him a long time before there was. Simply put, and the law presently requires this, but in, in a number of smaller counties it just has not proven to be feasible, or at least hasn't been done, a multidisciplinary investigative team is a group of folks who come together to investigate reports of child abuse. At a minimum, they're going to involve the appropriate police entity, someone from the prosecutor's office, and children and youth services. Very frequently, it will also involve a medical component, whether a nurse or, or personnel of the local hospital that may be providing, or, or psychologists who are providing uh, the, the child uh, some assistance in that regard, may involve a number of other people. The next logical outgrowth of that uh, is to the creation of the ability, uh, which takes the form of a CAC, to conduct impartial, professional forensic interviewing of the child by people who don't have a, a, a dog in the fight, who, who are in a sense above that, they're specifically trained in dealing with children of whatever age they are verbal and, and able to communicate uh, in ways that are non-threatening, that are non-suggestive, so that the, the objective is simply to get at the truth. And, uh, you know, Jackie just referred to the creation of additional penalties for uh, falsely accusing. Down my where, way where we have a CAC, uh, we have... Uh, put uh, matters particularly, uh, I can think of a few that have involved domestic situations into the CAC and, and come up with absolutely no indication of support for the accusations and in fact uh, in some cases to the contrary suggestions that those, those, uh, those allegations have been created by an adult as opposed to something the child uh, has experienced. Uh, so the, the CAC involves a physical location where the child can be talked to in a non-threatening, hopefully child-friendly environment, and, but the key is the f trained forensic interviewer. Uh, generally speaking, we find the most effective way, I think, I think the consensus uh, is, to record these interviews, both uh, audi audibly and uh, ideally on videotape. And... Uh, um, the power of this is, is enormous. The power of the recordings uh, frequently lead people who have been absolutely adamant, and we've seen it in my county, we've seen it in a lot of places, to plead guilty once they've seen the tape. Uh, and um, the, uh, the other aspect of both the MDIT and the CIT, it, or CAC rather, is that people hold each other responsible. Uh, it's, these are tough cases for a lot of folks. They're, with all of the press of activity with police and uh, both law enforcement and the prosecutor's office, it's easy for these things to sort of fall by the wayside. Having multiple people responsible to each other helps prevent that from happening. Uh, I know that this, uh, among, along with the various things that uh, uh, Ms. Bernard mentioned, are uh, something that's strongly supported by prosecutors uh, throughout the state. And some of the most inspiring testimony I felt we heard was from, from some of the folks who were making this work. 